This is a Falcon BMS 4.32 air to air refueling tutorial. I'm going to talk through uh, hooking up and refueling the F-16 Viper to the KC-10 extender. If you're not flying a Viper or you're not refueling with an extender, uh, some of the aspects of refueling will be a little bit different, but uh, most of it is going to be essentially the same. So the first thing to note is you have to find the tanker. As you can see, the KC-10 is sitting right in front of me. Um, and if you are new to tanking and you've never done this before, uh, a few things you can do to make your experience a little bit easier um, are, first of all, turning your fire control radar into trackball scan mode and locking up that uh, tanker in front of you. Uh, if you then switch to AA mode, uh, you can see your overtake on the right side and you can kind of follow him in uh, knowing your overtake the whole time without having to guess. Uh, the first thing we're going to do for actually refueling is we're going to make a radio call to tell him that we're coming. And you can do it as soon as you're within 10 nautical miles of the tanker. So I'm going to unpause the sim, and then I'm going to hit Y and then 1, which will uh, tell the tanker that we're coming in for fuel. It will tell him to stabilize his altitude, speed, and uh, get ready to uh, lower his boom. Falcon, 1-1, one, one, Canteen, 1-1. One, one. You are cleared to pre-contact position. So once you've heard that radio call, you just continue burning in towards the tanker. But uh, one thing you should very much do is uh, prepare your jet to take on fuel. And I'm going to pause the sim to show you how to do that. Uh, first, you need to open your fuel door. Um, if you're using the Harpoon pilot model like I am, it'll be right in front of this uh, buckle on the pilot's left shoulder. If not, look for the canopy jettison, which is uh, directly above it, essentially. And as you can see, it's currently in the closed position. The switch is labeled air refuel, and you just want to left-click it to open it. You'll know that's working properly if when you look back towards your HUD, you see this illuminated blue RDY on your right indexer. That tells you you're ready to receive fuel. So um, now I'm going to continue flying until I'm one nautical mile behind the tanker. Um, between uh, you know, 10 nautical miles and one nautical mile behind the tanker, there's not a huge amount of uh, control you need to have over your overtake. However, once you get to one nautical mile, my goal is always to have about 100 knots of overtake or approximately uh, be, be going approximately 400 knots. So I'm going to continue uh, to the one nautical mile position, and I'm going to try and shoot for f uh, 400 knots as my target airspeed. As you can see, I'm now about one nautical mile behind the tanker. Um, I'm at my target airspeed of 400 knots, and uh, I'm ready to take the next few steps. So the first step will be calling into the tanker and using the second radio option to tell him that I'm coming to get fuel from him right now. Uh, after that, my only job is to control my overtake on the tanker, and the way I do that is uh, until I'm 3,000 feet away, I'm maintaining my speed of approximately 400 knots. When I get to 3,000 feet, I'll be cutting back to about 370 knots. And then when I get within 1,000 feet, I'm going to cut back to about 330 knots. Uh, between 1,000 feet and uh, 100 feet, you need to hold yourself at that 330 knot threshold because between about 800 and uh, 150 or 200 feet behind the plane, you're going to see uh, the jet wash coming off the engines and you're going to get a lot of turbulence that's going to knock your jet around. So unless you keep your throttle forward, you're going to have a lot of trouble and you're going to get bounced around and lose, uh, lose your track. So I'm going to unpause the sim. I'm going to uh, send in that second radio call and I'm just going to push up into the pre-contact position. So I hit Y and then 2, and uh, I begin dropping my throttle back and using my air brakes to control my overtake. And I'm aiming generally for the bottom of the boom. As you can see, I just hit 800 feet and I started getting turbulence. And I'm Two, just going to correct lightly for it. One, Joker. And uh, one thing is, as you see, I didn't quite maintain my throttle. And uh, it started bouncing me around a little more than I wanted to be bounced around. But now we're just going to ride up into the pre contact position. Uh, maintain about 305 knots. Work a behind. Sometimes we get the contact position clearance really quick, like that. And so now I'm just going to push up, uh, aiming basically right past the tip of the boom, 
and uh, try and stay underneath the belly of the tanker, uh, right along that yellow center line. And I like to take this nice and slow, and just try and ease it right in there. And we're looking at the director lights up at the front of the plane, near the top of my screen. And when they stop blinking, I want to stabilize around 303 to 305 knots. And uh, at that point, I just want to maintain my airspeed and uh, reduce my lateral slip. Canteen, one, one. Heads up. Tanker is entering turn. Contact. So now that we're hooked up, that's, uh, that's really good because we're entering a turn. And uh, turning is a pretty key part of uh, Falcon tanking. You can see the tanker rolls in at a constant rate of speed, or uh, constant roll rate, and he's going to roll to uh, a 30 degree bank. So, as you can see, I just followed him right into the turn. I'm looking at the director lights up front, and I'm just trying to stay generally in the green. Um, my point with this was just to show you that you can, in fact, follow the tanker into the turn. Uh, once you get good enough, you'll be able to hook up in the turn. But I'm just going to explain the director lights really quick now. As you can see, uh, we've got four letters, D, U, F, and A. F stands for forward, A stands for aft, D stands for down, and U stands for up. These are all telling you which direction you need to move your jet. As you can see, I'm centered up and down on the left side that's showing nice and green. On the right side, I need to move a little bit aft. Um, but one thing is that unless you're seeing a red light, you're not near the edge of the boom. So you can maintain your position uh, with that yellow light on and you won't be disconnected. Um, one important thing to remember is you have the director lights, but don't forget to stay centered generally in the, uh, in the middle of the tanker. You have a, a fair amount of leeway left and right, but um, there's a lot of visual uh, signals that you can use to remain centered on the tanker. The first is, of course, this giant strip down the center of the tanker, uh, and you can keep that basically between the director lights. Also, your spacing uh, to the engines on either side of the tanker. Um, but finally, I'm just going to uh, explain disconnecting from the tanker and uh, the observation position, which is uh, a little complicated, and uh, especially in a turn, but it's an uh, important piece of multiplayer refueling. So I'm going to restart the sim now. So I just was disconnected uh, by moving out of position. Um, I'm now going to just uh, move to the tanker's observation position, which is off his right wing in an echelon right formation. In a turn, this can get pretty hairy. Um, you can see he's a little close to his wing there. And uh, when you lose position on him, it gets a little hard to stay here. But more important than uh, particularly where you're moving is you need to send the final command to the tanker, which is that you're done refueling. So I'm going to hit Y and then 3, and you can see my wingman will then move up into the pre-contact position. position. So if you have any questions, I hope you uh, consult my uh, PDF guide, which is linked in the video description below. Uh, or you can find me on the UO forums as Bloodbane611.